I will end. Let's go. Welcome back to Hoops Talks at A. I'm your host, Hoops, and this is episode 10 of the review titled Real Eyes Realize Real Lies. Not the title. Yes, I did. So, first of all, 10 episodes in. Thank you very much for anyone who's going to watch this. Whenever. Thank you very much. Even if you're tuning in late. Told you. Woo! 10 episodes. I told you. Okay, where is that going? I don't know. That was weird. Sorry. So, next. Thank you very much. Just want to say thank you. 10 episodes of anything is like really dope. So, for me to be able to, for me to have been able to come up here for 10 episodes, I feel like it's like really cool to me. Um, you know, talking just NBA hoops. So, yeah, that's cool. Dragging, let's go. So, welcome back to the news that everyone's here for James Harden. So, let's start with some background, basically. So, on Monday, a video came out of James Harden at an Adidas camp in China in front of a group of kids and a journalists who clearly were not expecting any of this to come out that he, he stated he did, Daryl Morey is a liar and he does not want to be a part of any organization that he's a part of. And then he, he basically repeated that statement again for people, just for people to really, really um, get what he said. And then that came out, Shams reported it. And I think everyone's first reaction, even when, even when Shams reported it, for me, there was still a part of me that doubted it. Because when I first saw it on, I saw it on like, I saw it on like, a, like written. So it was on some site on Twitter that reached it down. That statement by itself just seems so it looks like something that uh, Paul Sachs Sports or one of those guys did in the, before they went to sleep or something. And then when you see the video as well, it also seems like some, with the, with, um, the, with the age of AI that we live in, it's so, I thought it was AI. Who, who, why would James Harden say that? But it came out as true and that lit the whole NBA fraternity, everyone was on flipping. Everyone just woke up. Everyone was like, what the hell is going on? Uh, and all of that. And for me, I think the biggest reason was because the, the directness that, he, that it came out with. This is not new news. So, Woj reported that James Harden and Daryl Morey were going, had come to an agreement that James Harden is going to sign to his player option of what, I think around 35.6 million. And then Darren Moore is going to seek trades for James Harden to that so that basically um, they can recoup some assets back, basically, right? James Harden should have realized that Darren Moore does not have any incentive to, to listen to him, basically, to listen to him or to accept any trade that he feels will not benefit the Philadelphia 76ers who, who are paying him, basically. So that was the first mistake and really kind of just let his whole um, hullabaloo of issues that we have now. I think first we have to go back to the start. Where did this, why are we here? Why did James Harden take such drastic action? So basically the story is, allegedly, James Harden and Daryl Morley, Daryl, Daryl, Daryl Morey convinced James Harden to take less. So he basically took 33 million instead of the 47 million that he could have signed for in order to allow the Sixers to sign um, PJ Tucker and basically add like more pieces to the 76ers, 76ers to be able to make a better team. Better team equals better championship uh, odds, better chance to win the big thing. Yeah, right? So it makes sense at the time. But the interesting part, or yeah, illegal part, comes where Daryl Moy said that. For doing this now will basically give you a much more inflated contract in the future in order to kind of pay back the money that you lost this season. So instead of taking a player option of um, 35.6 million, which he did, they were going to renegotiate and basically um, sign for more than what he did to kind of make up for the whole shit that happened before. The deceit that James Harden perceived from Daryl Mori. Hey. We have another, another uh, 
preview or review of um, James Harden's contractual step back uh, package that I think we've had like what three seasons of the same thing basically with Houston coming out with the fat suit and then uh, <laughs> basically on the nets with the whole contract thing will he won't he sign and then now again with the whole direct I'm just going to come out straight and be like yo this you know, this guy basically fooled me and James Harden I feel like has he's, he's the he's, yeah, he's the he's the king of this whole he's the king of trade requests he knows how to he knows which buttons to push and he's not afraid to he's not afraid to to what uh, to to be uncomfortable because a lot of this is uncomfortable what's next basically what's next with James Harden requesting a trade and <laughs> clearly requesting a trade I think that he'll get his move I think um I know the CBA has made things harder and as much as the perception right now especially with Dame and James Harden kind of receiving as superstars, especially receiving pushback that I don't think was has been seen at this time, at this level, or in this in the media where like the front offices have been as like they're not willing to yield to the superstars as much as before. I still think he'll get his trade. So I think because simply my reasoning is he has a year contract, regardless of anything what he said he has a year so he's a depreciating asset at this point in time every day is losing value so i think it's going to happen at the trade deadline but he will get traded that's why that's my prediction i think he will either get traded to the hawks the clippers or the knicks those three teams i feel like are the biggest candidates two of them have superstar um have superstar point guards i do know that jalen bronson and trey trey young are flipping amazing I, think that no one he's not coming in there to and un, you unsub them or anything but i feel like he will he he remember he did that thing where he's like oh, it wasn't him no it was Kyrie. but he has the ability to be able to play the two and i feel like on those teams if he's able to um you know merge and play with players like maxi and flipping Kyrie, um russ and all those boys chris paul he should be able to fit in with um trey young and and what's his name? J- Jalen Brunson. I think, and they have, and the next thing is also, they have some of the best packages, I feel like, available in terms of a mix of young players, draft compensation. So they should be able to, you know, handle that part of the asking price. So ever since that trade, it's probably a situation where James has kind of um, lost like that Ooh, he's probably lost that emotional like attachment to to the NBA teams, to NBA teams, not the money, <laughs> to NBA teams. So he's probably lost that attachment to those two teams because no team was ever loyal to him, and especially the one which drafted him, the one which you know had the opportunity. The best and the best case, I think, is like they could have. The reason why he was traded from OKC is because they didn't want to go into luxury tax, and as a player, I'm sure you probably thinking. I was born and bred here, your third overall pick. Come on, you're a billionaire at that time, the owners, obviously. You're really not going to like pay that extra just for me. And then when the, when he when he's traded, you probably like realize, oh, I'm not as important as I thought I was, or I'm not as even I can get traded. Just being traded as just being traded sucks. Like imagine. Think about it, like, think of you. Imagine your family comes to you. I heard this somewhere. Imagine your family comes to you and is like, yo, you need to move. Imagine how you would feel. Like, regardless of how, just because your family doesn't pay, like, what, $50 more for over three seasons. I'm probably messing up the whole NBA finances thing, but that's how I kind of view it. So I think ever since then, James Harden has kind of just taken that whole Maverick role and just him looking at teams and looking at NBA because NBA at the NBA as a whole because he's here for a good time, not a long time, and that's basically James Harden in a nutshell. So, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this video. We have come to the end. Ooh, glad I've been able to get through this. Hopefully, you guys get what I'm going through, or oh, not what I get, get what I am putting out, and you probably I'm tracking. I'm tired. It's 3 a.m. Shout out. See you guys.
tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Whenever I see you guys. But not two months later. Definitely not two months. Very, very soon. See you guys.